All right, guys. One, two, three. One, two, three. Mac here. Um, talk back. Um, <clears throat> doing a <clears throat> the official. Okay, I'm actually doing the official. You know, there's been a lot of reviews out there talking about predators, right? People have been giving their views, talking this and that, here and there, whatnot, whatnot. Talkback is a real deal. You know, been around for a while. www.talkbackworld.net, where real fans roam. You know, the murky. I know. I know that Have Hope has already laid down his own issues, like his own thoughts on the picture. I haven't actually listened to Have Hope's um, review, and I didn't listen to the Have Hope's review because I wanted to go in there fresh. I wanted to go in there fresh, clean, new, and deal with the situation based on the Merc. Now, I just want to apologize because there's like a lot of um, work going on in the area. This is a Merc files because I'm actually not at the hot spots. I'm not at the base, home base, you know, on the, on, on a, on a, for talkback. So you're going to have to forget if you hear drilling or hammering or whatever that, that kind of stuff is going on, you know. Um, so forgive that. Anyway, look, this is a very complicated review to address um, because there's many things to talk about i'm going to actually break this down by going back in history now i'm going to say one very simple thing okay predator is one of the merc's favorite films of all time like it's actually in my top five films of all time you know i mean we're talking like my my top five superman one the movie empire strikes back number two number three is um what do they call it? Um, Back to the Future 1, the first one. Number 4, Predator. You know, I mean, I mean, that's how high up this picture actually is for the Mac. I'm talking about favorite films. I'm not talking about what I think are the best films I've seen. Faves, you know, movies that I've watched like a thousand times. Now, that being said, um, let's now look at the situation. You know, we, we you know, <clears throat> Predator 1 actually, you know, we had Arnie... You know, we had um, um, Carl Weathers, you know, we had um, Jesse the Body, Ventura, you know, we had that guy who played Billy, who was like in a lot of movies in the 80s, so guys know who that guy is, you know, you had, um, you had guys, you had guys in that picture, you know, and then obviously we've had a lot of ridiculous um, scenarios happen afterwards, you know, sequels that have come out. You know, I remember that Brother Strauss thing, uh, you know, rep, AVP Requiem, remember AVP 1, like, you know, crazy situations where you felt that these guys were trying to destroy everything that Predator actually was, you know, and then not to even mention Predator 2, which I really have never fully watched because, I, I mean, I, I didn't like it, you know, I've tried to watch, I just didn't really like it. I know people say, oh, it's not that bad, I didn't really like that movie. So really, there hasn't really been an official Predator sequel, as far as I'm concerned. Now, that being said, let's start looking at what we have with Predators. You see, when Predators actually first got announced, a lot of talkbackers out there, a lot of people in the world, a lot of people in the winds said that, look, what kind of cast is this? That was like the first thing. You were like, okay, look, Adrian Brody as the main guy, you know, you got Topher Grace, you got all these guys. You know, there's a fundamental issue with having guys like this going up against Predators. Now, I'm going to lay down the basic ideas of why initially, because you know, before I talk about the actual book, why initially there were issues with it. First of all, Predator 1. There was one Predator, one, one Predator against the most elite alpha male team you have ever seen in your life, headed by the number one guy, a.k.a. Arnold, okay? Now, only Arnold made it out. There was only one guy who made it out of that jungle, Arnold, and he made it out by the skin of his teeth. Okay, this guy only barely made it out of that jungle. Arnold, back then when Arnold was on top form. This is not old Arnold. This is when Arnold was on top form. The days of raw deal, days of red heat. You know what I'm saying? Conan, actually Conan was a bit earlier, but you know what I'm saying? This was when Arnold was top form Arnold and this guy only made it out skin of his teeth. He Look, if you look at Arnold's face at the end of Predator 1, he was shocked that he made it out. And you knew that the guy was never going to be the same again after that encounter with the first Predator. Now, if the first Predator can take out Billy, can take out um, Dutch, no, can take out Billy, can take out um, Dylan, can take out Blaine, can take out Mac, and can almost take out Dutch. 
Are you going to try and tell me that you're going to put regular guys, regular guys, on a planet full of predators, okay, full of them, okay, maybe not full of them, but on a planet with predator dogs, super predators, three super predators, okay, and one baby predator. And listen, the fact is that the little predator, which we find out in Predators, is the predator that beats um, Arnold and his team. You know, if you look at them, the mask and everything, that was the predator. The predator that the bigger predators are fighting, that's the kind of predator that one of them was on Earth that Arnold had to fight. All right? Now, let's get into Predators now. Now, I've just laid down the... Those were the basic fundamental things, you know, that we had. First thing is that, look, I'll tell you this. And this is like, before I go, I want to just talk about the positive things. First of all, this is the best Predator sequel that has, ever, that has been made. It's the best one. Like, out of all of them, I don't care what anybody tells me about Predator 2 or whatever, or AVP. This is easy. Like, it's not even a contest. It's like easily the best sequel to Predator 1 that there's been. E Look, these... Okay, anyway, it's the best. Why is it the best? Because it is clearly patently obvious when you're watching this movie that these guys actually liked Predator 1. You know, usually guys will come in and they have all this, like, you know, feelings of, oh, you know, I'm going to do this. I'm like, eh, and they don't really know about, they don't really like the material. They just want to do it because it's a big franchise. When you're watching this new one, it's clear, it's obvious that the director and the producer, Robert Rodriguez, and these guys, they actually like Predator 1. The way this thing looks, the feeling, and all of that sort of stuff, the mood, and I'm like, man, this is like, this is this actually like feels like a real Predator, you know, movie. For finally, after like, what, 20, whatever, 23 years, they're finally coming out with a proper, like a sequel that you're like, okay, this actually feels like it's, like, like it's part of the same movie. At the end of the day, you know, um, positive things, I mean, that was there. You've got the respectability. You've got the you've got the little references, obviously. And, and this is only really for fans, you know. You've got the little references in the movie from the old picture. You know, you've got obviously the story elements, which are referencing where the woman talks about what Dutch found and the fact that he found all you know what his report was, his brief was after the first encounter with the first predator. You've obviously got the um, 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 references to the actual events that happened in the movie, you know, the fact that that's um, the way that the predator is fought, and like this. I mean, things that I didn't really like. I mean, I'm gonna go into why I didn't like them, but I'm gonna explain to you what they were, okay? So, you've obviously got you know, when Billy made, he made his last stand, you know, Billy made his last stand with his, with his knife, you've got the um, Yakuza guy who makes his last stand with his sword, okay. Then you've got, um, obviously, um, Adrian Brody at the end who makes his last stand against the other Predator wearing the mud and then he stands there and then he shouts, blah, blah, blah. And you remember Arnold with the mud all over him standing there and blah, 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 blah. You know what I'm saying? You've got those references as well. You've got get him to the, get him to the chopper, get him to the chopper. You've got that as well. This is basically get him to the spaceship. Get to the spaceship. Get, get, get over there. Come on, do it. Listen. They, okay. You've got that as well. Okay. Then you've got, obviously, the woman, the one woman involved, you know, in the team of guys, which you have the one woman involved with the team of guys in the original one. This one is a bit different because the woman is now more empowered, which might be because we're in 2010. That's the reason why she's actually saving guys. You know, without that woman in this thing, guys would have been getting killed quicker. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's 2010. So, um, you know, things have changed a little bit. Because, you know, listen, in original Predators, the woman couldn't do anything. She was a liability. <laughs> that just tells you a lot about the time, the era that we're living in then. And she was actually a liability. She was like, look, um, Dylan told Dutch that, look, it's your problem. Like, if you want to bring her, that's your problem. Because we're going to just leave her or kill her. <laughs> it was either leave her or kill her. But this guy's like, look, he said, look, it's your problem. In today's thing, look, you better have that sniper woman with you because she was killing guys. She was saving lives. <laughs> 